Hello ladies and gentlemen, another morning here in Tenerife and welcome again. Uh, today it's session seven and, or it might be eight, I'm not sure. <laughs> seven, seven or eight, seven or eight. And um, today we're going to be thinking about the, the ingredient that is probably, in, in my opinion, after um, lots of reading, lots of research, lots of uh, listening to podcasts, the one ingredient that can make the most change to our to our health, but also is strongly linked to weight loss. So this is an incredible ingredient. And the really interesting thing is, is that in the USA, 97% of all people are actually deficient in this ingredient. And in the UK, 90% of people are deficient in this ingredient. So before we uh, before we reveal before I reveal what it is uh, you probably already guessed but anyway uh, before I reveal what it is um, let's t think a little bit about what it isn't so it's not protein protein is the is the word that most people link to uh, a plant-based diet when you mention to somebody that you're on a plant-based diet or that you're that you're thinking of going on a vegan diet, the, often the first thing that people say is, where are you gonna get your protein? Um, protein is the, is the, is the, uh, is the magic, is the magic word that everybody seems to know. And everybody, I mean, we've, we've all grown up, haven't we? You know, the schools told us how, in prote how important protein was. Uh, on television, we were always told how, impro how important protein is. The meat and dairy industry have reminded us over and over again of the importance of protein. Um, but in actual fact, uh, protein is in nearly all foods. And ask yourself this, have you ever heard of anybody with a protein deficiency? I'm guessing you probably haven't. Have you? Just like me, you've never heard of it, have you? No, because uh, it's virtually impossible to have a protein deficiency. The reason that we've been told that protein is so important is because the manufacturers of meat and dairy products used it as a way to sell their products, the same products that are making us ill. Anyway, I've got a whole new, there's a whole session on protein, I think you'll find it in the main objections section, which is uh, module, which is module number eight. So, if it's not protein, what could it be? Well, this might sound really boring, but it's fiber. <laughs> what fiber? How can fiber be important? Fiber is not even digested. We don't. It, it, so, what is fiber? So, fiber is the thing that holds plants together, okay? So, uh, if you think of a, a cauliflower, or you think of nuts, or you think of broccoli, the thing that holds them together is fiber. So, it's, it's basically the skeleton of a plant. And when we eat the plants, when we eat the broccoli, the cauliflower, the nuts, whatever, the whole grains, we we eat this fiber. So we eat these, uh, this basically what is the skeleton of the plant. But our bodies don't actually get any nutrition from the fiber. It basically, the fiber passes through our stomach and into our in, intestines, into our colon. So if if we don't digest it and there's no nutrients in it, why on earth could it, how could it have such a positive effect on our health and how could it possibly help us to lose weight? It's an interesting question, isn't it? <laughs> so the thing about fiber is that it doesn't actually feed us, but it feeds our bacteria. So in our gut, our gut is filled with millions, even trillions of, of, of bacteria. Uh, 80% of all the bacteria in our bodies actually lives in our gut. Um, for many, many years, this was basically ignored by science. We didn't really know much about it and, and science didn't really um, 
understand the process and 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 fiber was just something was it was it was kind of ignored but it's becoming clearer and clearer now that fiber is actually the thing that we that, that feeds our gut bacteria the more fiber we eat especially soluble fiber see below for details uh, especially uh, soluble fiber we feed our gut bacteria and in return our gut bacteria boosts our immune system help uh, uh, boosts our digestive system uh, helps ward off uh, uh, viruses if you're thinking about the coronavirus you know gut, healthy gut um, a healthy gut biome is what we what we're after so fiber has got all these huge uh, health benefits because we're actually feeding the bacteria which are our which, which are our allies when it comes to fighting diseases but fiber has been linked to all sorts of amazing things like longevity athletic performance I mean the list goes on and on and it's also thought now there's a whole new uh, new a new strain of science called epigenetics so that means on top of genetics that the fiber the foods that we eat actually influence the the expression of of our genes so depending on what we're eating our genes express themselves in a different way so uh i this this it sounds a little bit scientific and to be honest <laughs> this is a little bit over my head obviously i've not uh, i'm not a scientist i'm not a doctor but i know i have listened a lot to uh, podcasts and programs on fiber and one thing i do know for sure is that um, a lot of people who are know a lot more about it than i do uh, always say that if you get anything in your diet make sure it's fiber and maybe it's because we evolved eating fiber just as a just as a, a an example they researchers think that when we were evolving on the plains of africa that we were getting up to 120 grams of fiber in our diets every day and if you compared that to the measly 20 grams that most people in the uk struggle to meet each day you can see that our diets have, have really become uh, uh, fiber free zones and why is that well because all the foods that we actually do eat now don't contain fiber. So there's no fiber in meat. There's no fiber in dairy. There's no fiber in cheese. There's no fiber in milk. There's no fiber in any animal based products. And if you think about the products that people are eating uh, today, you know, we're, we're eating, uh, you know, meat every meal time, aren't we? We're eating cakes full of dairy, aren't we? We're we're eating cheese on top of pizzas and everything else that you can imagine so and there's, there's no fiber in any of this stuff it goes straight through our bodies and it doesn't feed our, um, our, our healthy bacteria so yeah it's, it's perhaps hardly surprising that we're all becoming so unhealthy when the health of our bodies depend on feeding our, the bacteria in our gut and effectively we're starving up and we're starving our bacteria by not eating enough fiber um, so I hope that this has been a very interesting uh, session for you I know I've um, really enjoyed doing it I've added a link below that you'll find to an interview with Rhonda Patrick so Rich Roll carried out an interview with Rhonda Patrick and she's an expert on fiber and epigenetics and uh, longevity and I highly recommend that you listen to it because if you want to know more about fiber and the benefits to health, um, then, uh, then this interview is really good. So to sum up, fiber is linked with extremely good health, but it's also strongly linked with losing weight. So go ahead, take a look at some of the ingredients, some of the foods below that I've listed that have got high fiber content and indulge yourself in fiber thank you very much for being here this morning with me again and i look forward uh, uh, a lot to doing tomorrow's session and uh, yeah have a great day bye bye